on uh, the mural um, is uh, an interesting starting point uh, for uh, um, the show today. Uh, tell us how you got involved in the mural project, uh, which is called Songs of Our City mm -hmm. and is on the uh, north side of the Caruso Music uh, Building on Eugene O'Neill Drive. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a long story short. Um, I was in Philadelphia uh, uh, at the time um, I created two big murals uh, in the central city of Philadelphia uh, under uh, the budget of uh, Recreation Department of Philadelphia. Uh, I have some experiences. I always have a desire to create some mural uh, around community. At the time, uh, I'm pretty proud of myself to create a, a such a big mural that the whole building wide, 70 feet wide and, uh, and uh, 30 some tall. So I, I created two of them. Then um, when the opportunity, opportunity coming up, um, my friend and, and Natasha and Ruben plus uh, my colleague Mark McKee and, uh, and his wife uh, tell me this great opportunity to working with, uh, with the city to create a mural. So I'm so excited. So we uh, working together and uh, uh, have the design done quickly. And, and uh, luckily, uh, we approved by the uh, selection committee. So here we are, uh, you know, created uh, one of the best mural in the city. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it is an absolute masterpiece. And we should say uh, it was a collaborative effort between yourself and uh, Mark mm. Gerard McKee, McKee mm -hmm. yes. and uh, students from the... Uh, uh, Lima Academy, uh, a student from Lima Academy. Um, uh, yeah, I think... It, the uh, Lima Academy of Fine yeah, Arts. Yeah, two of the students from there. And uh, you told me it was done, executed, the mural itself uh, was actually painted in uh, a month. Yeah, you know, we have a period of two months uh, to design and uh, uh, prepare the wall. At the same time, so, you know, uh, when uh, we had to fix the wall and uh, uh, getting cool ready and buy the materials and so forth, when everything ready, we only have one month left. So think about the, the, the hot day, the rainy day, and um, sometimes uh, it, it can paint. Sometimes you can't because it's so hot. Also, we have to have, um, you know, like a scaffold ready. We have to have everything ready and, and to working together at, at a time. With a one month, you think about four weeks, it's a very difficult to get <laughs> done. And also, we are under the, the, the time limit to finish on a certain time. Um, so it's, it's quite stressful. Uh, few months, so I, I and my 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 colleague, my crew, uh, sometimes they working late. I I remember I get up early, and the painting were late. You know, just uh, I grab some sandwich from home. You know, painting on every day, <laughs> if the the weather uh, allowed us. What part of the beauty of it, though, is for posterity. I mean, it, the work, uh, I'm sure, doing a mural that size, it must have been exhaustive. And now, with some time, it was executed, I believe, in 2012, a couple, so a couple of years ago. Yeah. Upon reflection, now you can experience the mural as everyone else can, to some extent, and just enjoy the mural for what it is. So the one of the, the, the thing um, I have to mention is, you know, when the uh, when we uh, doing the painting process, a lot of people pass by. They hang their horns and uh, they they yell. They they yelling about the great. You know they they said, oh you you folks you enlightened the street and uh, you enlightened the city. So which that's uh, that's great reward for artists because we involve with the community. We make the the people from the city really happy. So we really do something with that money and to, to, uh, for, for something really good and uh, 
good for the community and the community around. Which is great experiences. It, it, it is an absolute masterpiece. Reg, do you think at this time we could uh, roll that uh, DVD uh, that, uh, uh, of Songs of Our City? And uh, for those who uh, haven't uh, taken a real close look at that mural, uh, it is absolutely a masterpiece. about some of the, uh, pro the process uh, for you of, of uh, making the, the mural? The process is we have to research the, the mural. 
we have to think about how this mural can deeply involve the community. We thought at the time, uh, the music, the music is a big part of New London. You know, like a lot of clubs, a lot of uh, lab, a uh, live band, a lot of musicians living there. So uh, you know, every weekend sometimes you can you can hear a lot of music. So we thought it's interesting to involve with the subject matter, the subject matter of music. At the same time, uh, Caruso building is an instrument. Uh, I mean, the the, the the tradition of cell instrument in that building, and also they have great stories about uh, uh, Crusoe, uh, Crusoe family. So we, we thought it was a great subject matter to explore, and uh, uh, we did. <laughs> right, and, and you were uh, telling me uh, while the video was playing about some of the people that were models for the uh, mural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the people model for the mural, you know, of course, my colleague Mark, he have his research, I have my research, we, we come in together, we put image together, um, then transfer to the wall. Um, the, the people who we, who we use for model, they, they, some of the musicians, some of them musicians, some of those kids, they really love music. They learning. My son are learning pianos. The girl I use, she play violins. So those are pe those people who really involve with music, not just models. Um, at at this time, uh, Reg, if we could go to the uh, slideshow, it's always interesting for me to look at studies uh, as part of understanding the creative process in art. Um, I was fortunate enough years ago to work on a piece uh, in conjunction with the Smith College Museum of Art, and they have in their collection uh, studies for the Isle of Grand Jat painting uh, by Seurat, and it's always interesting to me to look at studies. And this, you were telling me, uh, <laughs> is modeled in part by uh, after your son? <laughs> yes. That's... That's what he he played the, the small uh, toys, you know. Like he, he said, "Oh, I play for you." So excited to you all with uh, this project. And then this this girl now in college, and she is very uh, gracious to modeling for nothing. You know, uh, so they just be happy. They just happy to be part of this uh, this mural. Let me ask you this: How big are the uh, the originals for the stu of the studies? How how large are the were the studies? Uh, the study is uh, twenty two. I mean, eighteen by by twenty two. Eighteen by so. Yeah. The, needless to say, they had to be uh, uh, enlarged, enlarged considerably. Yeah. yeah I noticed on, on the uh, many many times. I, yeah, and I noticed on the uh, uh, study for the child uh, the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, it, Speak about the transfer process uh, from the studies to the uh, mural itself. Yeah, well, we have many uh, ways to transfer this mural. We can use projections, we can use uh, a grid. Uh, we have a dilemma at the time. I think a grid, a, a grid is more like a safe. Because if you project from a straight, it could be, in, um, you know, like a, create a, a hustle uh, on the street. So we we decided to make a grid, which is a traditional way of mural painting from um, whatever you think of early age, particularly in Renaissance, you can see all those grid masters, they have these drawings with a grid and, and to enlarge for the mural or painting. So it's a, it's a traditional method for mural painting. See, so the mural paint we use is a, 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 if nothing wrong with the wall, it's going to be last 50 years. The color not going to change that much. Uh, it's, it's durable uh, quality of a paint. Um, so at the same time, so this, this, this color re, re, react to the weather and uh, the time of the day. So they give you a different layer of the, the painting. So the tonality is going to be different, you know, during the winter, summer, and the, because of the tree. Right. And uh, the environment is going to be reflected on the wall. 
so, so different. So it, at the evening, they put uh, this uh, couple of nice light on it and just make the city so, uh, that street so much, uh, so beautiful. So, so nice for people to walking by. Thanks, Raj. I appreciate that. Uh, those, uh, those studies are really great. And uh, as I said, uh, the, looking at a study in conjunction with a masterpiece, as the mural itself is, is uh, really enhances the appreciation I have for the, the, uh, the mural itself. Um, it's interesting for me to uh, see uh, the mural and at different times uh, of the day, the light will change dramatically. And as the seasons, through the seasons, the winter light at four o'clock is gonna be fundamentally different uh, on that wall there than the noon summer, summer light. So it's sort of a, a work in progress in its own right. Yeah, yeah. sometimes you know, the weather is not so great they have like a gloomy day, a, a gloomy day. It's still gonna be beautiful, a great tone. So, right. so it's softer, it's not so dramatic. This time of, uh, this time of the year, uh, late afternoon, the light hits it and it, yeah. the texture of the wall is, is something that's really interesting too because that enhances uh, the uh, artistry. Yeah. Uh, My way. colleague, uh, um, Mark McKee, and I, at the same time, we really considered the whole building as a part of a mural. With the break, uh, initial color um, uh, there, we just uh, enhance the color, make a, uh, make a little bit more varieties, but the base is still the, the building's break color. So uh, that's, uh, that's what... Um, um, we're working on at the beginning, so we want to show the color on the street, not, not fully change the color, and uh, give um, a more uh, interesting color rather than uh, just totally changing the street. Well, so environmentally, we do concern, and we try to consider this mural is a part of a street. The street is a part of a mural. That's it. That, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. This the it's a it's a character in a, in a, a play of a different kind. Yeah, I think my colleague will probably even have more to say about that. <laughs> so, so uh, tell us about your work uh, with the Eastern Connecticut uh, State University in Willimantic, and uh, you're a professor of art and drawing there. Yeah, uh, I'm lucky. Uh, that's 15 years no now 15 14 years ago I'm pretty lucky to hired by Eastern Connecticut State University so since on uh, I'm working with students every day I I, I feel blessed you know like uh, um, you working with students each year you meet different students and each year you're sending students away um, it's great, great, um, um, it's, it's a great story. It sometimes makes me uh, really appreciate um, a person or as a teacher. So I'm not only teach, I'm also learning many things from students myself. Um, I teaching figure drawing, mainly, sometimes uh, a fundamental drawing, or painting. Um, since uh, since the year two thousand, now um, I'm um, not only uh, tenured, also I'm a full professor. Um, I'm promoted. I promoted a full professor a couple of years ago. Uh, so now um, I can be even more focused on teaching and uh, to give back to the students. From what I learned. Now, when when you're when you're teaching, let me ask you this: What are some of the fundamental things that you try to convey about what it means to be an artist to your students? You know, um, for me, where I come from, uh, fundamental things is a practice, practice, and a practice. At the same time, uh, to know many artistic issues um, and as much as possible. And uh, try to be creative thinking, uh, and that's some from the main focus 
uh, I try to uh, address to the students. Um, I also gradually adjusting myself to really uh, and fit the liberal art ed education program in Eastern Connecticut State University. My background is really from a fine art school. Um, I started training myself from a high school, even go back to uh, elementary school. Uh, we practice drawings, fundamental drawing, painting, and then learning from our great masters, you know, like Renaissance, um, in present is the neoclassic. And the Russia, uh, um, uh, Russia classical painting as well. Like, uh, uh, through those academic training, uh, we built a great foundation. Then they come to the United States. Uh, I start more and more exploring those uh, liberal art education aspect of study. Um, when I was in Iowa State, uh, I learned a lot of art criticism and uh, a lot of art history courses I have to, uh, to take. So come to Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, we have a lot of critics around, uh, around uh, not around the world, but uh, you know, some feel best from the world, and uh, a lot of great, great masters um, in the United States come to uh, to our program to lecture and the uh, studio visit. So, uh, so um, I try to pass in all those knowledges to the, to the students. I was interested in, in reading your biography to, uh, to, to know of the connection to the Philadelphia Academy of Fine Arts mm -hmm. uh, and specifically uh, your work and in, in, in some ways is reminiscent uh, to me of the Ashcan School of Painting mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also uh, Thomas Aikens. Uh, yeah. And, and <laughs> you walked in the footsteps of those people in, in Philadelphia. You know, luckily, um, when I graduated from uh, Iowa State University, I wanted to go to another school. Two choices in my mind. One is Yale, another one is Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. But when I visited the school, when I visited the school, um, uh, in Philadelphia, they have a museum of um, American art. I just walk in, I see this painting is a nude, uh, painting by uh, later my major professor, Cindy Goodman. Uh, it's a beautiful nude. I, I immediately impressed by that piece. I said, this the school I'm going to study. Then later on, I know more, more, and more, and more. Thomas Aikens, and Robert Henrys, and then the John Sloan, the uh, Askin School. George Bellows. Yeah, George Bellow. Uh, George Bellow. Um, uh, so I can proud, proud, uh, I'm very proud, proudly say, but I mean not exactly uh, um, can be in what I mean. Once I, I show my work at Allentown Museum, and some of the, the critics on the catalog, they said, I'm one of the continuing, uh, I, I'm one of the artists uh, continuing uh, asking school's tradition. And so I'm really, really um, honored by that sentence. And uh, I think it's a, a, a continuum that, uh, should be honored by your presence in, in the, the discussion. Um, along these lines, that's a perfect segue to show some of your own work and uh, some of the studies you've done uh, in uh, uh, the championing of uh, uh, the homeless and uh, some of the uh, overlooked members of society. Uh, that group of work is uh, uh, homeless people in Birmingham Alabama. So when I was there, um, I met so many people in the park called Ingrid Kelly Park, um, which is the civil rights movement began there. The nearby is the, the church. Uh, um, how those bombs exploded. 
and kill those children. So uh, many, many years later, still a lot of homeless people there. I'm struck by the fact. So I take a lot of pictures, come back, uh, working on that series called In the Park. The park is, is still um, have a lot of statues and a sculpture there. Like one of the sculpture is a um, um, policeman uh, uh, with a dog, you know, with a water hose and so forth. So, so also Martin Luther King's statue right. in the center of the park. So it's a his historical park. So I'm so glad that I'm visiting there and uh, have so many pictures done and uh, working with those materials. There's a soulful, there's a, a soulfulness and, and empathy in these works that is uh, uh, something that's hard hard to capture. Uh, many artists I know try, would try. Uh, how how do you teach that? Those things is coming with you um, because my life experiences uh, give me uh, layers and a texture on those work. Um, uh, you call soulfulness, but I consider myself, you know, searching for something, searching for a place to really uh, can settle. So, which is United States. So when I come here, I have nothing. You know, just as students, I have my American dream as well. Uh, I try to uh, stay here and uh, have the best life. So at the time, the, uh, the, the condition is not there. I have to try to stay, try to achieve a lot of things, and, and uh, I can stay here to be benefited uh, in the society. So I'm wandering one, uh, one, uh, around, I'm wandering around um, at the society, try to find my place. So <laughs> right. that's probably a part of a soul searching. And uh, um, luckily, I, I get a job, you know, I achieved something. Uh, but at the same time, so, those really show where I come from because uh, when uh, when I was um, a child, my family is broken, so uh, then my mom kind of become homeless. Uh, me myself also with that situation, you know, no money, nothing. My sister, brothers, so forth. So we have um, uh, not exactly homeless situation, but uh, it's kind of like a. Um, very poor, no better than the homeless people. So I do understand them better. Right, also. and it, it comes through in the in in your work, uh, Reg. If we could uh, come back here, we, we want to talk about the uh, LQM gallery. You're a man who wears uh, many hats. Uh, mm -hmm. We've spoken about the mural, uh, your professorship at Eastern Connecticut State College, your work a, as an artist, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, you're also involved in is the LQM Gallery and the International Contemporary uh, Art Space Residency Program. Yeah, so um, when, when I was come to the United States, I also carry with another mission because I want to um, promoting American art in China. Um, since the year 2003, I have a lot of many, many lectures in uh, China universities. Um, I think probably 25, 26 of them um, to promoting American realism. So after that, I also think about to bring a Chinese artist come to United States to visit the museums, to experience the cultures, to, to understand, uh, truly understand uh, uh, um, American art. Uh, for example, every time I go to a museum, I will, I will bring them to American section. Uh, then we know American art uh, better. Um, so I try to create this program to, um, to be a, 
a bridge between Chinese artists and uh, and American artists. Of course, they have many other revenues, but uh, um, I want to my my involvement, um, my personal involvement with those. Um, so it's a part of my desire. So, so that's why I try to bring artists from China to here. I also try to working on um, bringing American artists to China. Uh, but as I said before, I already uh, kind of promote a lot, a lot of group of uh, American figurative work in China. That's well received. Um, uh, in result of that, I also publish a book called American Selected uh, American Figurative Painter. It published in year 2009 in China. Um, uh, so it's, it's, it's like a, a collector's edition. Only 5,000 uh, copy uh, printed. Right. So uh, people really like that book in China. I read a quotation in uh, doing some research for the show of yours that uh, in, in regard to uh, the role of the artist is uh, to reflect something meaningful for the community and society. Yeah. Um, when I was in uh, college, I kind of learning or read this book called um, Re uh, Reenchantment of Art by Susie Gopic. So, um, the, that means that our work should be um, constructive to the society, which I think uh, uh, it, it just um, right for me. I, I think that that uh, philosophical point really fit to me, fit where I come from, because uh, from um, a Chinese uh, education, mainly in my early age, so we learning a lot of communities and the responsibilities for the society. So uh, the Marxism uh, is something uh, I, I have before. Then with that book, um, it uh, kind of helped me form an idea, artwork, not just for my own pleasure, maybe it can benefit the society in large. So that's, uh, that's something I'm working on even now, because I want my work to really involve with, uh, with some of the issues people concerned, not just artist issues, right. uh, but the society issues. And, and the general. artist should aspire ultimately to truth. Try, you know, you, you, you try. Sometimes <laughs> you struggle the truth, but uh, uh, that's but, a big uh, word. Yeah, but um, I don't know. I can living up to that, but uh, I'll try the best to be a better artist. Uh, be an artist can be meaningful to others, to the society. Right. Well, this is this has been great. Uh, <laughs> I. I enjoy uh, speaking with you and uh, seeing your work has been an absolute uh, pleasure and to, to uh, get to know more about the process that went into making that mural uh, has certainly been a, uh, a great, uh, great treasure for me. Um, let's give uh, the people uh, an idea of how they could uh, get involved with LQM Gallery. Um, uh, the email address? Yeah, we'll have a... Uh, um LQM Gallery, www, um, LQ, uh, LQMGallery.com, right. and also Facebook, so you, you can check our events and uh, the artists who are involved with our gallery, and that will be, um, that'll be um, well documented. So check those emails and uh, Hopefully, uh, come to our openings and uh, involve with our program. Wherever you may be watching tonight, I hope you enjoyed the show. It's been a, a, a great journey to do the show, and I thank uh, our uh, guest, uh, Chimin Liu, uh, for uh, 
being so great and uh, for your contribution to uh, New London through the mural project and uh, through your uh, uh, artistic efforts uh, uh, in, in your career. Thank you, Drew, for hiring me and appreciate that's uh, one of the copies um, of my catalog for you. Our kind? This recent show hosted by Provenance Center. <laughs> Yeah, 2012, right? Yes. Well, we'll have a hard time topping this. A uh, great guest, and he comes bearing gifts. I appreciate it so much, and uh, I can't tell you how great it was. Uh, Reggie, Art, uh, now and here, over and out.